This is not going to be about microstation sheets. This is going to be about open roads, open rail sheets. And so if you were thinking this is going to be about microstation sheets, we probably need a different one for that. So just uh, let Scott know if that's something that might be of interest. What we're going to be talking about today is just kind of catch you up. I did, as a lot of you know, if you've set these up before, I've done a ton of videos online about setting up sheets and under the hood about sheet seed definitions and what goes on. And I just wanted to talk about some things, had some different mindset changes on some different ideas. And, you know, for example, putting everything into one sheet seed to speed up the workspace. We'll be talking about that a lot today. It's just some different things that I've learned that I think may be useful to you all. And so we just wanted to put together uh, some slides here. This is going to get posted later. Uh, this uh, presentation does have recordings in it with audio. I've got the audio muted, of course, for today. But I want to take a look at some of the uh, things that we're going to be talking about here. Again, we're just going to be looking at what's been changed. You know, how can I make your life a little bit easier? Or how can we make your life a little easier in setting these up? Again, we're talking about the, the multiple sheets in here as well. Okay. All right, so the objectives, putting the sheet seeds into one DG and lib. Now, you may put those into two or three. Maybe you got one for plan sheets, one for profile sheets, one for cross-sections. That's up to you. But we have some agencies out there with literally hundreds of sheet seed definitions. And trying to put all of those in their own DG and lib, the workspace was getting really slow. And so we've gone through some changes in our thought process, and now we're putting things into one or a few DG and libs. And that definitely makes opening up your files quicker, and it also makes switching between files quicker, which is nice. We're also going to take a look at changing the uh, reference attachment view settings. That's really important. We're going to look at a lot with renaming. We're going to look at what happens if we mess up, if we're putting everything into one file and I make a mistake in, in the dialog. Uh, do I have to start over? Uh, the answer to that is no. Spoiler alert. We can also change the assigned annotation group after the fact, and we can need to have a talk about units of resolution. I discovered something very significant on that that's going to be of interest to a lot of you, especially here in the U.S., and some additional tips, and then a final checklist to use when you're setting these up. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is creating our own starter file. A lot of you may be thinking about moving to international foot. Maybe you're in survey feet right now, and I'm sure that that's on your mind. Well, do I have to, you know, start all over again? Well, if you do, you do. That's up to you. There is going to be some training, I think, down the road on converting workspaces to international fee. But uh, let's not get off track. The starter file, basically, you want to make sure that you're matching up your units of resolution with what you're going to be doing for your design, what you're going to be doing for your drawing and your sheet models. And the other thing that we want to do in the starter file is, of course, we're going to have our geometry. We're going to have a corridor. But we also need to set up the proper symbology. That way that you're not having to think about the symbology every time you're placing a name boundary or creating your sheet, your actual sheet seeds. So this first one, we're going to take a look at uh, creating uh, the starter file. And again, this might be review for some of you, but I promise you we'll be getting into some topics that you probably haven't seen before. And so just hang in there. Uh, but we're going to make this new file. I'm just going to call it like all sheets uh, start file uh, dot lib. And I'm just using a 2D seed file, I'm working in the examples workspace here that we deliver. First thing I want to take a look at is my attributes. Even making sure that I'm my default primary class, I'm on you know level close style zero. You can be by level, default, as simple as you can get it here. We don't want to be adding levels. And I'm going to place a piece of geometry with no feature definition. And you could even theoretically do this in the workspace, in the work set if you wanted to, but I'm going to start at zero, zero. I'm just going to put a line out there, you know, 15,000 feet out, you know, it's a straight line. You can make that line longer down the road if you need to. It won't hurt anything. So we have our horizontal geometry in place. Now we need to give that a, a vertical. So we'll come over to our element profiles and profile by constant elevation. I just choose zero. Again, no feature definition here. So we're going to select our baseline, right click, put in zero, accept that. And then that will go ahead and give that uh, vertical uh, profile. Use our right-click view control. We can go over and open up our play-in profile in 3D models now. And so we'll select OK to tag or horizontal and then open up our profile view. And I just typically like to, you know, do our fit view, get everything looking good. 
And then I also like to change my drawing scale on each of my views. I usually just set them all one to one. So this is my, and I'll have to do that for each view. You don't have to do this, just kind of keeping everything nice, neat, consistent. And once we get that done, I typically like to save my settings. Then we're going to build our corridor. And we're going to build this corridor using a template uh, with no points in it. Make sure you don't use any feature definitions again. So no feature definition on my corridor. We're just going to use a profile that we set. I don't even care if it has a name. And again, my template point is just, I called it null. It has nothing in it. It's blank. Just the fact that we need a corridor. So I'm going to pick that template. You see there's nothing in there. Okay. And I just lock it to the start, lock it to the end, and I'll put a template drop in the middle. Again, it's kind of irrelevant. The fact is you just need to build a corridor. Then we need to clean up this file, right? So we open up Explore. We don't want any features in here. We don't want any element templates, that type of thing. So it's important that we clean all that out. We'll talk about that in our next slides. So this is where we're going to be cleaning up the starter file. This is what it should not contain. Annotation definitions or groups. Feature symbologies or definitions, element templates. A feature name being used cannot be deleted. So if you've used one, you're going to go in and need to change that to none first. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on this one. So I'm going to open up Explorer, and I'm going to go down to look in my Open Road Standards, and I'm just going to kind of go up and make sure that I got everything cleaned out. I haven't done anything with annotations yet, so there's no reason to look in there just yet. But I'm going to get rid of my symbologies that were used. I'm going to get rid of any feature definitions so I can delete those again. But if they're being used, you can't delete them. So if you get a message, you're going to need to go back and set it to none and then come back and delete. So we got those cleaned out. And again, you would check your annotation definitions and groups. There's not going to be an inner yet. You'll see that later when we get those all clean. Same thing with element templates. Uh, you shouldn't have any element templates in here at this time, so I'm going to delete those. I even like to check my levels. At this point, the only level I should have in here is default. And that is good, so we'll save settings here. You can compress the file if you want to. And that's it for that one. So we've got the starter file done. You should have the proper default set symbology set upon the completion. And so we want to set that default symbology to control the uh, name boundary properties. And so let's, this is a quick video, but it just takes a lot of the pain out of changing all this later. I come in and I give this a an element assignment. I think I've got one in examples workspace I call draft name boundary. And in your color, style, and weight, you can set to by level. And here's a key. Did you see that I set that to construction class? It's kind of handy. And also I set the transparency to 50%. And then I save my settings. And so I've got my level set, I got my construction class, I got my transparency, and then my color, style, and weight are all by level. It seems to work out really well for setting these up and that way things can be turned off with construction class and with the transparency being set it also makes it a little easier on the eyes uh, when you're taking a look at those uh, name boundaries if you found this video helpful please give it a like if you want to see more such series consider subscribing to our channel thank you and see you next time